Tony, you said it, but before we get there, today's episode of Crossover Thursday is sponsored by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash NFL and use code in all lowercase NFL to win $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. Prize Picks, run your game. Keys to the game here. Jaguars, Dolphins. Tony, what are the keys for Jacksonville? Jacksonville has to score touchdowns. Miami can play poorly and have four plays and hit 28 points because they're so combustible, so explosive, so sudden. The Jaguars had problems last year in the red zone. We talked about their inability to run the ball, and then it became Trevor versus 11 players and the back line. And a lot of times they – had to rely on field goals. And then that was fine until they started missing field goals. They were eight and three and the offense hadn't played well. That just tells you that everything was hard. Nothing was easy. So I do believe they have to score early. They have to convert uh, a lot of their red zone appearances into touchdowns when when they can. You're not going to score a touchdown every single time. But I I just believe the Jaguars, when they cross the 40-yard line, have to get more points than they did last year when they had field goal issues. They had down and distance issues. They were turning the ball over on downs because they were going for it on fourth and six because they didn't feel confident in Brandon McManus making field goals. That's just for a team that is searching for an identity and searching for something. You can't keep getting to the river and not drinking water. You're just going to the river for no reason, and then you're turning around thirsty. So I think they have to capitalize on their opportunities. And obviously, from a coach speak standpoint, they got to tackle. The game is still about blocking and tackling. And last but not least, they cannot turn the ball over. Yep, and that's that's a great place to start for me. Uh, I look at this matchup. My three keys for Miami is uh, negating Evan Ingram, who became a really good safety blanket. I think with the corners, the Dolphins will have a lot of flexibility as far as how they want to choose to play the matchups. But I look at Ingram and the Dolphins the past few years, it's been a really sore spot trying to defend the middle of the field against tight ends and running backs. And obviously ETN's a piece of that puzzle as well. But when a dude's getting 100, and, what would he get? 350 targets last year, Evan Ingram. I mean, he, he became the security blanket and a guy who when Trevor needed completions, he found them and he, and he converted those targets into receptions at a very high rate. I think interrupting that while you're playing your matchups with your other players is really essential for Miami. I think Miami getting pressure, untraditional pressure with four is important as well. Um, The Anthony Weaver scheme coming over from Baltimore uh, is very well renowned for its pressure being aggressive, but doing so with simulated pressures where they're showing four potential rushers, but those aren't the rushers who are coming. And that's why you look at the addition of Jordan Brooks, who they brought in from Seattle, who's a really dynamic former first round pick at linebacker. He's really good at pressuring from depth. Jalen Ramsey getting back to playing in the nickel. With, before he came to Miami and Vic Fangio had him playing exclusively outside corner, he had found this resurgence as a player who could play inside, play in the nickel, move around, play some matchups, but then pressure. And with his length off the edge, he had some really splash plays. We didn't see that from Jalen Ramsey last year. So be ready to drop somebody out in your obvious passing situations. Bring somebody who's away from where you think they're going to turn the center in Mitch Morse. And if you can get those free runners and pressure Trevor, I think that's a big piece of the puzzle. And then the last one was a point of emphasis that Miami has talked about their players and their coaches throughout this offseason, which is controlling the ball. Uh, A lot of explosive plays, like you mentioned, you you can really struggle to move the ball, hit a couple of explosive plays, and you look up, you still got 24, 27 points. But for Miami, they want to be more methodical. They want to be more balanced. They don't want to turn around and run their offense back or their defense back out there after a two-minute scoring drive that went 70 yards because they hit a 55-yard bomb with consistency. So that doesn't mean you have to sit here three yards in a cloud of dusted or run into the strength of Jacksonville's front. If that's a mismatch that you're, you're not finding success with, but if Jacksonville's going to play off man, find easy completions, don't get greedy, make sure you're methodically working the ball down the field and don't make mistakes in those moments. That's going to set you behind the sticks or have a turnover as well. One of the things that scared me when I saw the schedule and I realized we had a coaching change here in Jacksonville on the defensive side of the ball, that was going to be a total schematic change from what we did last year. They, last year, they were an odd front, 
uh, had Trayvon Walker and Joshua Hines Allen. Believe it or not, they led the seat, they led the league in a, as a duo in sacks, yeah. but they were dropping the coverage all the time. We got sick of seeing <laughs> 275 pound dudes back out in the flat, right? So now it's an even front, uh, more traditional. Trayvon's going to be used a little bit better, but this was not the matchup for new team, new scheme. It, it, it just, it, I said it all off season, and somebody asked Doug Peterson yesterday at a press conference, uh, is Miami a good matchup for this new defense? He goes, uh, no, and thank you for uh, reminding me. Because with new schemes, sometimes comes communication issues. Mm -hmm. Have a communication issue against a team that has a track team on the field <laughs> is like a whole bunch of 80-yard touchdowns. So you could be doing everything right. This is like the wrong team to make a mistake against. And the mistakes sometimes are natural when this is the first live action and you can't really simulate a game in practice. That's going to be the key for me. I don't want if Jaguar fans see something going wrong and it looks like it's a colossal uh, personnel issue. It probably isn't. It's probably more that everything's new and that this is the wrong team. It's like your first time paying, playing chess and you're sitting down with Bobby Fisher. That's just not good. Yeah. You know? It's really interesting because Miami has that same experience with their defense too, with Weaver bringing in a new scheme that's a little bit of a mismatch but or uh, of a mashup, I should say, of what Vic did uh, this past year, Fangio, and then what the Brian Flores, Josh Boyer type scheme was for three seasons before that. But there's so much new. Uh, I, I look at you know Jacksonville offensively, they got athletes too. You know, so I, I think this this talking point definitely cuts both ways. Um, I, I think Miami probably in this individual talking point does have the advantage because there's some new receivers for Jacksonville too, whereas you know, a, a timing-based offense too. This is the first time since high school too has had the same offensive scheme for three straight seasons, and he's had Waddle and Hill for all of that. So them being the pillar players, as you'd expect, if the Dolphins are going to get it done, those guys are probably going to have a big hand in getting it done.